Hello there everybody, you are doing? My name is Supersonic Blower and welcome back to another Combine video. This time we are going to be in the semi-finals. This is going to be a uh, grubby powerhouse over on the Chaos side versus uh, this is Elo Fishers. This is the team who came out first last time. We're going to be looking at this side of things. In terms of bands so far, we have some pretty good and standard bands. Freya, Pele, Alquang and Barkers. Barkers actually a very important man uh, now considering the fact that he can start lane uh, in lane with 30 power and a stun. This does leave open Jibalonkwe who is a fantastic uh, long range uh, or late game uh, hyper carry not to mention as well the ultimate doing fantastic amounts of work at disruption so a very solid and safe pick. It's interesting though that we've seen uh, in the last game, uh, which these guys, uh, originally I had planned to spectate, but I ended up in the other game, uh, they end up picking up, uh, or banning the Minaj, or the, uh, Shibalongkwe ban. Now, this is interesting because it did leave open Najar and Fenrir, and I was gonna say, like, hey, what if they picked up one of these two, uh, but instead they decide, yeah, let's just pick up both of them. So, most likely the, uh, a very, very strong early game comp, uh, especially with jungle and support. We're gonna see Agni and Kuzumbo come out. Now, that's certainly an interesting one. This Kuzumbo pick is one that I've seen uh, Elo Fishers and also as well, things like Moxies have run uh, very effectively from the solo lane side of things. So, uh, in terms of uh, the team comp, Potato, I believe, is uh, the mid laner. And I know that he has a very strong Agni. Uh, so grabbing that for him is totally fine. Itori is the ADC. Uh, Bus is the Guardian player. Whether or not he will play this, I don't know. Uh, Sixer is the solo, and Get Fisher is jungle. So Poseidon picker for uh, Grubby Powerhouse. It's a very strong early comp. There's a lot of setup for this Poseidon, and it's a very, very good early game. But I'm concerned as this moves a little bit later. Ban's coming back, though. Kumbakana and an Uro ban. I like the ban on the all right to take away that more early aggression. So far, it is a very early aggressive comp, but I wouldn't mind seeing that rounded out with some, uh, with a later game hyper carry, maybe in Polo, maybe a Moose and Carb, something that can really poke with the Fenrir. Hell, honestly, I wouldn't even mind seeing something like an Izanami. The Romana is a ban, which you do see going the way of Gravity Powerhouse, which is uh, a nice pick. I like seeing that get taken off the table. Romana also very, very strong, can't necessarily be burnt down very quickly by the team comp that they see so far. And also as well, he can walk through player deployable walls, so because of that, they're going to get rid of it. Now, Cupid as a ban is not something you see every day, so I don't mind the call for it, just because it's, again, early aggression, space creation, big amounts of damage, and every single one of the players uh, currently on Elo Fishers does get screwed by cripples. So because of that, just take it off the table. There's nothing wrong with taking it off the table if it completely destroys you. So yeah. Now though, picks going through. Tarbeck has the selection here. They're looking for more than likely a, a an ADC and a solo. Could very well be uh, an Fenrir solo, but I'm more inclined to believe that it would be uh, Fenrir jungle or uh, Fenrir support or Nigel jungle. Could see them if they really wanted to here. Pick up Artio, and then they run like Fenris solo Naja. Uh, then they can run Artio. Uh, yeah, they can run Artio Naja Fenrir here. Artio solo Fenrir support Naja jungle gives them a fairly good, decent amount of control. The Cripple also is good. Again, very very strong. Uh, it also as well means that it takes it off the table uh, for the Elo Fishers when the boss can play the Artio. It does do very well against the Fenrir, especially with early. Kernanos, interesting. Very interesting to see the Kernanos picked here. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing six. Of them. I wouldn't mind just seeing like Artio get picked up and then Artio and uh, when they miss an MC jungle. Uh, so Kamazot is going to be the selection. That could be solo. That could be jungle. We don't know yet. That depends on what Getfish feels like playing. I will be interested to see just what comes out, and it's gonna be Amaterasu. So, this is still, again, a little bit more flex pick. Alright, now it's not a flex pick. Bologna, eh, you say that, Bologna can be support. It's not super great, but you can get a lot of good early pressure with it. So, 
They could run the Bologna support, Kuzumbo Solo, Kamazots, Jungle. They could do it. I'm not 100% sold on it. Not 100%. I would like to see the Amaterasu more so. But it depends where they're looking to actually try and put this. I'm more inclined to believe that it's going to be Bass uh, for the support at this point. But they are going to lock in the Bologna and they are going to lock in this Kamazot. So this is a strange comp. And there's the Artio, which I'm surprised they didn't pick. I'm really surprised that this Artio was not picked first. I really, really thought that that was going to get picked first. But it is going to be... Artio is going to be in the solo. If I do a quick look at Grubby Powerhouse. Uh, Nikan is the jungle. So that's Fenrir jungle. Which means Grubson is going to be playing the Naja support. Which is certainly interesting to see from this side of things. I'm not 100% sold uh, on the selection of the Karnanos. I feel like that should have been the Artio first. In all honesty. But early aggression is all entirely in favor of Grubby Powerhouse. Later game team fights, it's still not bad because you do have just a lot of beads burners and a lot of control potential uh, and damage burst with Poseidon ult, but that's not to say that Elo Fishers don't have a lot themselves. Is this Kamagots? Uh, Kamagots? Kamazots can get off to a good start, then it's going to be good. Agni can play from a very safe range and do a lot of good damage, and if Potato gets fed like he has done before, he can make... Uh, Dragonad's life a uh, living hell not to mention that Itori can just ult and it screws over everyone it's really going to come down to how well these ults play out especially this Kurnanos ult if he can use that polymorph and screw people over for 2 seconds with no DR that's going to be fantastic potential but for now let's get into the game and see just how things go Alright then, ladies and gentlemen, we are in game, as we can see currently going on. I'll just move that here. Sixers, uh, or sorry, Elo Fishers versus uh, Grubby Powerhouse, as it were. Should be an interesting start and an interesting option here. Sixer is going for what looks to be the uh, Berserker Shield Rush. Don't mind it, it's a good bit of sustain. It's going to be giving up the totem a little bit early but he should then be able to curve this back in with a good bit of uh sustain himself especially against someone like an rto who really doesn't necessarily do huge amounts early and or sustain that much so it's a very sustain focused combo this early stages of elo fishers i uh, expect to see a fair bit of anti-heal come out uh, on the side of dirty pa of grubby powerhouse curious to see where things go actually see a heavy hat or a cudgel start for Fenrir but hang on sprint and horrific animal forced Bass just looking to try and be a little bit more annoying it's a fair bit more poke but with Jimbo Long Kuei and those branching bowlers to start things off he will be totally fine for the most part still some good damage but eats a bramble blast in response so has to fall back and Clay does go in favor of Grubby Powerhouse. As to be expected, when you have a Naja, that's just kind of what they do. That's what they do for the early stage of the game, is they do just say, hey, we have lane pressure, which is not bad for them. But going back to this Cudgel start, it could be interesting to see exactly where that's going to be going. But hang on, Blink forward, forces the beats from Poseidon. Now Dragonaz is very low, will regress now that Fenrir has leapt in, but didn't get anything off it in response. Now, Kamazots will just heal up a fair chunk. Will secure one for one on those mid camps. Misses the Echo Screech, though, which is a little awkward. And that's going to see where things go. Good stun, though. Pushes Poseidon very low. Very good Vampiric Bats. Good stun onto the Agni. Now the Brutal Eyes. Can he find the follow-up order? No, he can't. Get Fisher actually starts body blocking him. And now Minions are doing the damage. Get Fisher picks up the first blood. Naja has made a rotation. Can't quite find it with the Sash, though. It's a very awkward situation he's now found himself in. Great, great work from Getfisher there. Body blocking to stop uh, Nikan getting that last auto in. Really solid work. Setting up Kamazots, putting the Fenrir behind. It's just the kind of things that you want to see coming out from a high level team. <coughs> There's also a very early rotation coming out uh, from Grubson there. Like a very very early rotation level two usually we see it's the jungler's ganking uh uh 
the duo lane at that stage. Is this time though they decided, nah, you know what, let's flip the script. <laughs> Support's gonna rotate and gank mid for a change. Let's see how you like it. That did do though is that uh, first blood bounty has really kind of given Potato a lot more leeway in this lane. He's already gone back, got his boots two in comparison to boots one. So there's a little bit of power on it, a little bit more rotation and speed as well. Not to mention as well, just having the farm actually was able to place a ward already. Now he's going to look to just try and hit five as soon as he can. Totem does this time actually end up going the way of what I believe is RTO. I believe it went the way of RTO. Yes, it has indeed. So that is important. Grubson has been rotating a fair bit. Dash forward coming out from Mitori. Sprint has been popped. Is he going to be able to fight it? Bramble Blast is good. And the follow up is better. Sash holds him in place. And Wobbernek puts down Mitori for a very aggressive play. Boss just didn't have any way of following that. Good sprint as well uh, by Grubson. Really loud. Uh, to reposition himself, not worry about the slope and the poison darts. He was then able to just sit back in the spring stance, get a little bit of life still going. He still had some pots as well. And so with the spike gauntlet, he ended up with a fair bit of physical power as well. Meanwhile, Get Fisher dives tower with the ults, picks up Dragon Ads. Good leap. Very good devourer, actually, to be able to get over that. Now they're looking to try and set up on mid camps. Agni, though, does have a bomb available, so can secure this at his leisure. Surprised we won't see him leash it. And it was all just good play. Solo lane is doing what solo laners like to do. And that is slap fight a lot. Just a lot. As you can see. Now though, life tap coming through. That's a big chunk of damage. Actually forces Bologna to try and ult now. That's a big win for her in this situation. Totem is now back and active and available. Bologna is just going to try and slap that. You can get, um, uh, you should be able to get healing off that, I believe, from uh, the Berserker Shield for hitting that. But now, life tap again, just putting Bologna very low into an awkward situation. Six and now, we'll probably have to stay in Scourge and try and heal up as much as he can. He can heal up a lot, don't get me wrong. And he's actually leveling this first, which is, uh, I like this. Because he knows that Arteo is mostly going to stun him out of uh, at the damage from the slam. So you're only going to get like a little bit of the spin damage, which is absolute trash. So instead, just level Scourge, take the disarm duration, take the additional healing, keep yourself safe and secure. So I really like this call here. Because as you can see, look, spin damage, you could do at most 150 to everything. Or you could just, you know, like, or you could just do 150 straight up. And that's, you know, if Bludgeon has all the damage in it. So... I really like this call to pick up the Scourge first. Really, really nice work and really nice recognition. Meanwhile, over on the left-hand side, you can see a little bit of a contention. Bit of an awkward timing from Potato there. Ended up burning an Aggie Bomb he didn't need to, so that's an L. But, Hila Fishers are still fine with that. They still secure it. Fenrir looking for this buff. Not going to be able to get it. Does drop a ward over in, in the end. No, actually, they're going to give this over to a Tory. Potato's not going to take the red buff. I oh, know he is. Yeah, he is. He was just saving it. He was getting something else. I was going to say, it's rare, that you see, it's rare that you see a mid laner allow the ADC to get their uh, to get their buff. Because after all, it is, it is a mid laner's buff. It has to be a mid laner's buff. And now six minutes in, you see quite the lead. Or quite the lack of a lead. Despite the play coming out from Elo Fishers, it's still only 500 gold. Still a very close game. Can't help but feel that what we're seeing now is potentially a stagnant play here. Oh, Victor was used. Did get buffed. Uh, now does a fair bit more damage, but still, it doesn't give uh, it doesn't give physical and magical power. It just gives physical power, so it's kind of doo doo. But three members of the team are physical, so at least some of them will be able to get some use out of it. Six and now just goes back, starts snapping up the totem. I don't mind it. Sometimes you've got to beat your totem, you've got to make it erupt, and it's beneficial when it does. See, look at that. He beat on his totem, white stuff came out the top, and uh, everyone's happy that he did it. Especially Sixer. He's got a very proud look on his face. Less enough about Tanjiro. For now, we can continue on the idea of the fact that Enchanted Spear. Even though he's behind, he hasn't back. Uh, oh, sorry. It doesn't look like Potato has backed as much. So, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Golden Hand. Yeah. He's still got 1.3k to spend. So does uh, Get Fisher right now. That's pretty much the full crusher he's going to be able to get, to get on his first back. But 
Nikan is actually going for a very... He's going for a Captain twig -S build here. He's going for a very defensive option. Already has the Reinforced Greaves. Uh, just to try and put on a frontline show here. So he's looking to just be a front tank here. Interesting Agni Bomb there. Coming out from Potato. Bit awkward, but nonetheless. He'll, he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. His Red Buff did get invaded. Although, where is this all going? What was the point of that? I'm sorry, Gurbson, but what was the point of that? Now we get Blinky from Get Fisher. He gets pushed very low. We'll have a heal on his way from the back down. Darkest of Nice does come through to try and help us kill the rest of the team. Fenrir actually gets stunned. Forster beats himself. Now looks for another lead. Unchained. Does get the damage off. Good knock up onto Kuzumbo. And everyone will disengage. But I'm sorry, Grubson. Why did you ult there? There was no reason to ult there. That was dumb and a waste of your time. You should not have done that. There was no follow up. Beats got forced by Potato. As did the Poseidon ult. Poseidon ult ended up going onto Potato. Missed everything. And Grubson just went way too hard, way too quickly there. It was very lucky that they didn't end up taking even more damage or getting pushed out for it. But still important. As we look back again, we see that uh, Elo Fishers have once again beat on the totem to White Stuff came out. An important thing to note, as I mentioned in the last video as well, is the longer that totem stays around, uh, the longer it takes for it to actually provide the buff. So you do have to put a little bit more of an investment into it, which is why I don't mind seeing Sixa go for this uh, sort of more of an attack speed oriented build. Bologna can do a fair bit with it, and she will look to try and just keep herself sustained right now. The aim of the game is sustain, but early aggression from Tarbeck, a lot with this Stone of Binding. That's a lot of penetration he has right now. 25 uh, when he uh, actually gets that Stone of Binding off. I don't know whether or not the passive will stack multiple times, but meanwhile, mid lane, do excuse me. Dragonite picks up Get Fisher with the ult, chasing down now, using that universal ring toss, because he was slowed, and he gets caught by the jump. Beautiful cripple as well. Boss falls to Grubson. This is a much better look from them. Why are they not going for Gold Fury right now? Guys, you just got two fantastic picks. Why the fuck are you guys not on Gold Fury? Excuse me? Hello? Why are you not on Gold Fury right now? I'm actually upset at this. That should have been a Gold Fury right there. Now we see Fenrir. In an awkward situation, we'll have to ult. for Darkest of Nights, but it's not going to matter. Potato just holds himself. There's no follow-up. I feel like the uh, the ult there was more to try and uh, keep himself alive with the additional protections. But that is going to be a Shalele, which does mean that is. There it is, the Blackthorn Hammer. This Fenrir has a lot of health right now, and I do mean a lot. 450 additional health. We'll also as well have 10% CDR or 50 uh, additional MP5, so he can stay around a lot, which is why I don't mind this kind of uh, build that's coming out from him. Given the tick damage potential as well, he's going to very easily be able to set up uh, or have the Reinforced Greaves give him a lot of protections. It's 21 protections in boots, so that is a lot. Though Spear of the Magus has been finished now for Potato, so if he's going to try and actually do anything with this, I need to see uh, some more actual defense items come out for him. Uh, we could see something like a Breastplate of Valor, we could see things like a Genji's Guard. Uh, Genji's Guard isn't a bad option here, gives him a little bit more CDR, gives him more magical protections, which he's really going to try and need as he currently stands. The rotation over to the solo lane has been possibly picked up by a ward there, but... Six has really not had a great time against Tarbuck right now. Misses the stun. Ults in place on the up down. But now that that's down, he's just getting dove. There's no saving him. Tarbuck does manage to pick up six. Uh, Fenrir wasn't even needed at that point. But he'll take the assist because, you know, that's, that's what junglers do. They have to feel like they were involved somehow. Take a quick peek at the graphs. Still fairly even. Smidge in the favor of Grubby Powerhouse right now. It's mid. Dragons gets pushed incredibly low. Oh, isn't available. But beads were forced. And now Grubson again, just too deep. Everyone else is too far away. It feels like Grubson is a little, a little bit of a different page right now compared to the rest of his team. He's going very aggressively and there's no follow-up. He does get Potato's beads, but everyone else was just there. And it's just too awkward as Elo Fishers do manage to secure themselves the invade on the red buff. Solo Tower does go down for Tarbet, which now means regardless of how this game goes, he won his lane, so he did his job. 
do want to see potential for a rotation now. He is a big boy. He's a higher level than anyone else. That cripple field will be phenomenal against everyone else on the team. I want to see him try and abuse this now. I need to see him try and abuse this now as we do actually see he's going to make his way over to the speed buff. He's actually not going to go and pick up the speed buff or drop it. He will instead just back and get the mid camps, uh, oh, sorry, the back camps over on the right hand side. Meanwhile, going to see oracles go the way of elo fishers no one has actually attempted this gold fury until that was mentioned kusumbo does pick up a lot of damage into the naja who will the universal ring toss away and now it looks like they're just trying to set up a bit of a bait here could go in an okay situation but sixer has rotated before tarbuck big damage in the mid lane Puts Sixer very low. He'll have to back. Fenrir gets a good leap and picks up the Agni, but there's no follow-up. Everyone else is too far away. Now it's on for Bad Out of Hell, looking to try and find something into the damage. He can't really find anything, but Getfisher will pick up Grubson. And thanks to Potato, we saw that Nikan end up falling. Tarbeck will pick one up, and Wobbin will pick up another. So it's two for two trades so far. Good stun. We'll get the rest of the team out, but Itori is very low. And with the ADC on almost full HP, and look to try and start up this Gold Fury. Tarbeck will have to tank this, but with both damage dealers here, this should be a fairly good secure. Yeah, but their, their ward just despawned, though. Mm, Sixer isn't able to end up coming in in the end. Will manage to run away, but it was a good fight by the looks of things. It's a bit awkward on the situation from Nikon. No, again, this weird situation where he picks someone up, and there's no one else that's able to follow it. Everyone else was off behind the Tier 1 tower. So he had to drag everyone back and away. He was very lucky though that Wobnek was able to start putting more damage and he did get a good free cast off. But Roma and Victor under the tier 1 tower. Agni Bomb's doing a lot of work into Tarbek. Najar around the backside. We do know that Agni still doesn't have beads where he does now. But now he's just looking to try and get some beads forced for this situation. Interesting that Nikan could potentially be going for a frostbound hammer here. Not something that we're used to seeing on these Fenris. And again, it is just a huge amount of health. We could actually see a Tori here look to try and go into more of a kin size build. And he will do a lot of damage into that if he does decide to go for it. Totem, last one of the game. Looking to be taken by Audio. She saw what Bologna was doing with her totem earlier on and decided that, hey, I'm going to do it. Just for one last time, we'll secure that. A little bit more MP5, just for the rest of the team, which can help them sustain through some of these kind of situations. Now, we haven't really seen much come out from these solo lane, uh, from these duo lane right now. Both have been relatively quiet. More rotations coming out from Womanek. In fact, actually, he ends up getting taken out by Get Fisher, just off on the right hand side, going into the jungle, immediately chunked down huge amounts from that crusher. And the damage coming out with Transcendence on its way. Get Fisher really looking to try and do some big damage. Naja goes up into the air, missed times the ult. Unfortunately, Potato will manage to pick that up from Grubson though. Fenrir leapt in. Get Fisher takes down Dragon on the backside. There's five people here, and nowhere near enough members from Grubby to even think of doing anything. Tier 1 tower will fall, and this should be a Fire Giant call. Yep, that's a full fire giant call. Audio is here. Audio has been spotted out. Awkward miss on the stun there from the Agni, but four man stun will secure her. Because it was actually getting very low here. So is the Agni. She's actually forced them off the fire giant. Itori will jump forward and look to try and do some more damage, but everyone is now too low to do the fire giant. They will instead have to settle if they want to do anything for the Pyromancer. So Tarbeck will through end up costing them their life but to stop them getting fire giant that was huge the four man stun everyone grouped up and i think they ended up taking a fire uh, the magma pools which just decimated the entirety of elo fishes fire giant did recently receive his buff uh, it has more magical it has magical power scaling now so that is uh important meaning that the knock up and the meteors and things like that will do more damage but not only that as well but he also got the magma puddles back so he can do a lot of damage as Bass forced her ult. Did, Grubson didn't even have his ult up. He just ulted out of fear there. I'm surprised that but they didn't have the timer on his ult there. That surprises me a lot. When you've got someone like a Najjar support, you're looking at this and going, guys, his ult's down. He doesn't have any CDR. This is when it's going to be back up. You don't have to be this kind of stuff. Don't worry about it. Don't be that kind of stuff. It's important. Like that ult now being on cooldown is a big disruption 
uh, into the backside of things. If Grubson takes someone up, Dragon Age now has a slightly more uh, lax time of dealing with it. As you see a little bit of damage going through. I say a little bit. Sixer actually picks up Dragonads there. Up in the air is one. Polymorph does come through. Hits two, but now Getfish is on the back. Kodanos is getting chugged. Will charge through, but it's not good enough. Devour will pick that up. Wobbenek does fall. You know, on the back side of things. Grubson gets taken out by Sixer. Now it's 5v1 or 4v1 in the situation. Bologna now trying to deal with a Fenrir. Can't do it. Nikan picks that up. Aegis has been forced, though, and he gets put down in the ground. No fire giant this, for the first time, but now there's no one to stop him. Sure, Sixer may have fallen, but their team will still get fire giant, and he will still be able to be there to help make use of what his team can do with it. I'm really surprised at the way that Grubby have been playing this. They've just not really been playing in position. They've all been kind of very split up. Meanwhile, Elo Fishers, they've been very, very focused on how they've done things. Six has been, you know, Six has been the one who's been taken up by Naja. Why the hell is Naja taking up Bologna? Like, who the hell is, is thinking that Bologna is the best target there? And that's all because Six has been diving in and making him, oh, they're making him take him out. Yes, getting rid of a front line can be effective, but when you have no follow-up, which no one on Mikan has been, oh, sorry, from Grubby Powerhouse has been able to do, no one's been able to follow that up. No one has been there to make use of this. Even if, you know, even from the regard of, I've taken a front line out, you can aggress onto their back line more. Pfft, no. That's just not happened in the slightest. Now the only Fury with a Fire Giant has uh, has been taken by the Elo Fishers. This is going to be important for them in the next minute. This means that their next push, they're going to be able to start pushing up a lot on these minion waves, as I mentioned in the uh, in the last episode, or the last cast that we did. Uh, we mentioned how this minion wave will be a lot tankier and do a lot more damage. This means that they can get a slow push building on any lane. I do find it interesting what Grubby Powerhouse are doing. They're looking to try and play a bit of a game of chicken right now. They're saying, all right, then, you guys, you take a tier one tower, we'll take a tier one tower. Unfortunately, though, because of the fire giant, because of the way the minion wave was pushed up, not everyone is going to be able to buy. They will all back, though. Now, um, Getfisher will have told them this situation, so they will settle for a tier one and a tier two, trading out their tier ones over in the mid and solo side. Now it's on to try and push for whether or not this tower in the mid lane is going to go. A little bit of resistance being put up, but for now, they're just going to say, you know what? Nah, you can have that. I, ain't, You can have that. That ain't even what I'm mad at. Like, straight up. That's just what it is. The gold lead now sitting dangerously close to that 10,000 gold. It was a small period of time where it was in Mikan's favor, but it was, oh, sorry. It was in Grubby Powerhouse's favor, but it wasn't much. And for the rest of the game, Elo Fishers have just been calling the shots every single time. Four level lead for Potato versus Dragon Ads. Four level lead in the jungle. Two level lead in the solo. And a level apiece for the duo lane. Backing now, Sap over that 10,000 gold mark, 10,500 gold lead. And this experience lead as well at 13,000 is very much relevant. I'm really not seeing what this Fenrir build is supposed to be doing. It's all health. And that means jack shit right now. Straight up. That means jack shit. You have a lot more health. Great. Do you have any protections to back that up? No. In which case then you are a really long noodle. That means nothing. When you have Agni with a sustained damage, when you have Itori pumping out damage as much as he has been, when Getfisher can burst you down, if this had any protections in it, if that Runeforge hammer was, I don't even care at this point. Like, uh, I, I, you give me a Spirit's Robe, a uh, Only Hunter's Garb, fantastic, great, huge amount of protection, huge health to go with it. It's not. I really don't like it. I don't see what the point of this is right now. There's no reason for him to be trying to do more damage through this situation. As you see, Elo Fish is now three minutes stun. They're looking to try and push onto this. Potato just chunks Tarbeck. He was on the front line trying to do what he can. Same thing going for Nikan. He picks up one, but he can't get anything. Get Fisher takes that one down. Naja is in the air, but he set himself up for damage. Get Fisher's waiting on the return. Picks that one up. In fact, everyone from Elo Fishers was waiting. Two people remaining. Kraken is here, but it only hits Bologna. Get Fisher grabs himself what is most likely going to be a quadra kill if he has his way. But he is in the fountain and he won't be able to get it. Instead, triple kill finish things off. 
Hilo Fishers just walk into the base, cleanly take it. Unfortunate situation for Grubby Powerhouse. Not really names that I can say I've seen. Whereas you look at Gr uh, look at what was on Hilo Fishers. These are names that we've seen, and it was a tall order. I'm not gonna lie, Grubby Powerhouse came into this. It was a tall order for them to try and take this down. And unfortunately, they just couldn't muster it up. There's some awkward situations and awkward choices. This Najjar was not able to get online. This Fenrir also was just put so far behind, even deciding to try and build Tanky. It just wasn't enough for them to try and do anything. And Getfish had just said, ha, that's cute here. How do we show you how a real jungler does damage? Unfortunately, it was just a situation where no one really felt like they were winning. The only lane that was winning was Tarbeck. And Sixer just said, okay then, whatever. You can win lane. I don't care. You're not going to be able to have as much of an impact. Tarbeck couldn't ever put himself in a situation where he was able to be a big scary frontliner because everyone else on Elo Fishers was just so far ahead. Like, insanely far ahead. Now, this is a best of three, I believe, for the semi-finals, so there will be a game two coming up that will be in the next video, ladies and gentlemen. So, I will see you all for game two. But until then, my name has been Suicide. Blah, blah, blah. So, like, comment, subscribe, and favorite from to share the stuff so people know that it exists. You guys have been a fantastic audience and I shall see you around.